After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of the two main factors you have to pay attention to when you want to explain or make predictions about chemical or physical changes in a system. I'm going to first focus on physical change in this video and discuss phase changes. And to illustrate this thinking, I'm going to introduce you to a diagram called a Peck diagram, which takes into consideration these two factors. It plots potential energy of a system versus the number of configurations the system can access. When building explanations or making predictions about chemical or physical change, chemists tend to think about this concept of stability. And stability can be thought of as being comprised of two factors, the energetic stability of a state or a system, or what I'll refer to as the configurational stability, or the number of configurations a system can access. Now sometimes these two factors work together towards the overall stability of a state or a system, but sometimes they work against each other. So to understand this better, I want to take a moment to explain to you what is meant by the energetic stability of a system as well as the configurational stability. Let's start with energetics. In general, the energetic stability of a system is really a measure of the potential energy of the system. And if we think about the system being comprised of a large number of particles, the potential energy is a measure of the average distance between the particles as well as the strength of attractive or repulsive forces between those particles. Now, if, if I plot on a y-axis potential energy increasing as I move up as a function of the distance between particles, I can see that as particles get closer together in a state or a system, the potential energy goes down or becomes lower. Now, these particles can actually get too close. And if, if that occurs, the potential energy can shoot back up, which implies a repulsive interaction is occurring. For the sake of this video, I want to focus on the attractive forces. And potential energy is not just a function of the distance between particles, but also the strength of the interaction or attractive forces between them. So if I'm comparing two systems, one where the attractive forces are stronger, represented by the blue particles here, I can see that the potential energy is lower at the same average distance if the attractive forces are stronger. The configurational stability of a state can be thought of as the number of ways particles adopt or configurations the particles adopt in that state. The more number of ways the particles can arrange themselves in a state, both spatially or energetically, the higher the configurational stability of that state. And this really comes down to probability. If you have a large number of configurations that a particles can adopt in a certain state, there's a higher probability of finding those particles in that state. For example, imagine I had uh, a two-particle system. And these, all these boxes here represented the number of ways that these particles could arrange themselves spatially. You can see that of all of these possible configurations, there's only two configurations where the particles are very close to each other. Therefore, one could say that there's a very low probability that the particles will be found in that state compared to the other state where there's a much higher probability that the particles will be further apart. This relates as well to solids, liquids, and gases. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Particles in the solid state adopt fewer configurations than the liquid or gas state. This is due to the organized structure that particles adopt when in the solid state. If we compare this to the liquid state, there are many more configurations the particles adopt. And this, therefore, we can say that liquids in general are of higher configurational stability or a higher probability of particles being found in the liquid state than the solid state. If we compare that to the gas state or the gas phase, the gas state has the highest number of potential configurations for the particles. Therefore, it has the highest configurational stability. So we can say overall that configurations or the probability of particles being found in configurational states definitely favors gas over liquid over solid. Now let's take into account both the potential energy of the particles and the number of configurations. Combine these two and form what I call a Peck diagram or a potential energy versus configurations diagram. As an example, I'd like to plot in this diagram the liquid state for a substance and the gas state. First, I'll plot the liquid state, and we know that liquids with respect to gases are of lower potential energy because the particles are on average closer together due to the stronger attractive forces. So we can say a liquid is more energetically stable or energetically favored than a gas. But a gas 
even though it's less energetically stable than a liquid, is favored by the number of configurations. In other words, in the gas phase, the particles have way more ways they can arrange themselves, both spatially and energetically, as, than compared to the liquid phase. So the gas phase is favored by the number of configurations. So now we have a situation where one state is favored by energetics and the other is favored by the number of configurations. So which factor dominates? And in other words, how can we determine what the stable state is if these two factors compete against each other? So it turns out when these two factors are in competition, like in this case, that the stable state depends on the temperature. At low temperature, the energetically more stable state is favored because the random motions are more restricted or slowed as the temperature is reduced. This allows the attractive forces to have a more of an impact holding the system in a state of lower potential energy, which in this case is also of lower number of configurations. This system gets trapped in a state of lower configurations due to the attractive forces. But as temperature increases, the input of energy now increases the random motion, which also increases the likelihood that particles will escape the attractive forces of the lower potential energy state and move to the higher potential energy state, or the gas phase. Once particles have moved to the gas phase as temperature increases, the likelihood of moving back to the state of lower number of configurations is very low compared to staying in a state of higher number of configurations. So with phases, temperature in the end determines the stable state.